Copies of today's uh, the verse that Swamiji has been covering. In case you're not here with a camp booklet, I can get you one if you want to raise your hand. Thank you. A reminder, please uh, turn off your cell phones and uh, wear a mask throughout the class and remind any friends who forgot. We have some outside if you need. Thank you. Sahana, 
सहनौनू सह वीरकरवाह तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तु मिद्विषावह ओ शाति शाति ओ पूर्णमद पूर्णमिद पूर्णमुदच्य पूर्ण से पूर्णमान यूर्णमेवशिष्य ओ शाति 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 श्रुतिस्मृतिपुराण आल करुणाल नमा भगवत्द शंकर लोकशंक शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बालरायण सूत्रभाष्यकृत वंदे भगवतुन ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्तिद विभागिने व्योमद्याप्तहाय दक्षिणामूर्त नम ओ नमो ब्रह्मादिभ्य ब्रह्म विद्यासंप्रदायकर्तृभ्य वंशर्षिभ्य महद्य नमो गुरुभ्य to the weekend students said uh, this morning we are continuing to do the topic that we are doing in our retreat which is the part of the bhodarnika upanishad for which the handouts are prepared which hopefully you have them and uh, the topic is that of the jivan mukta the one who is liberated while living and a wise person like this is described in the 15th passage here on page 317 i read and you please repeat sava ayam atma भूतानाधिपतिथाचने मौचे समर्पिताव अस्मत्मने सर्वाणि भूतानि सर्वे देवाहा सर्वे लोकाहा सर्वे प्राणाहा सर्व एतात्मा समर्पिता दि वाइस पर्सन इज डिस्क्राइब लाइफ ईश्वर सवा एम आत्मा दिस आत्मा दिस सर्व दिस लिबरेटेड वाइट पर्सन द जीवन मुक्त है ही इज डिस्क्राइब एज सर्वे भूतापति भूताना राजा इमेजिन द वाइस पर्सन इज सर्वे भूताना राजा हिज किंग ऑफ ऑल द बींग्स सर्वेशाम भूतानाम अधिपति ही इज रूलर ऑफ ऑल द बींग्स दिस डिस्क्रिप्शन द प्राइमरी सेंस अप्लाइज टू ईश्वर ब्रह्मन विथ माया इज कॉल ईश्वर इन माया देर इज द ओमनीशंस ओमनी फोर्टन देवर ब्रह्म ईश्वर 
who is the Upadhi of Maya is, in a primary sense, creator, sustainer, dissolver, omniscient, omnipotent. That's how Bhagavan is. As Lord Krishna describes in the Bhagavad Gita, Vedaham samatitani vartamanani charjana bhavishyani bhutani mamtu vedana kaschana Vedaham samatitani bhutani As Ishvara, Lord Krishna says, I know all the bhutani, all the beings, all the elements, entities that have gone by, meaning that I know the past. Vartamanani charja. I know all that is in the present. Bhavishyani Bhutani. I know all that will come to being in future. So Lord Krishna Ishvara describes himself as omniscient. One who knows the past, present and future. Also Lord Krishna says that. Prakatim swam was tabje, visujami punaf punaha. Bhutak gramim krasnam avasam prakater vasat. Building my prakati, my maya. My creative power, projecting power. Visujami punaf punaha. I create the universe again and again. And again I resolve it, again and again I create it. Bhuta Grami Vidam Krishnam, this entire universe consisting of all these names and forms, again and again I create, sustain, dissolve. So all this is a description of Ishvara. Param Brahma. With the Upadhi of Maya, it's called Ishvara, and Ishvara is the creator, sustainer, dissolver, in primary sense. Only all-knowing, all-powerful, in primary sense. Therefore, this description, Sarvesham Bhutanam Adhipatihi, the ruler of all the beings, Sarvesham Bhutanam Raja, the king of all the beings, can primarily only apply to Ishvara. However, this description is given of a wise person. Do you think that when you become wise, that you become the ruler of all the beings, the whole universe? Does a wise person, can he create, a, he can he create, sustain, dissolve, from he, can he do that? When you say that he is a wise person, who has discovered the identity with Brahman, I am Brahman, I am Brahman, so what happens to him? Does he become all-knowing? Does he become all-powerful? Does he gain the ability to create, sustain? Does all this happen? No and yes. Not in the primary sense. They can create and he can sustain, he can dissolve. Know that he is the ruler of all the beings, the king of all the beings. Not in the primary sense. But in a secondary sense you can say he is. Had he been the ruler of all the universe, had he been the king of all the universe, Raja. The word Raja, the root Raj means to shine. So he is called a Raja or king who shines among people. In that sense, wise person is a Raja, he shines, his Vidya, his knowledge shines. 
and still that he is the ruler of all the beings, the king of all the beings, cannot be applied in primary sense. Then why does Shruti choose to describe the wise person as ruler of all, as the king of all? So Mahasikana said, Evam Sarabhutatma Vidvan Brahmit Mukto Bhavati. This is a description of mukti or freedom. A person who can rule everything, everybody, and who is not ruled by anybody, who is the king of everybody and who is not again ruled by anybody, an unruled ruler. Suppose there is an entity, Ishwara, how would he feel? So that is the physical description of freedom, as we understand. What is freedom? The freedom to do what I want, the freedom to control everything, and the privilege of not being controlled by anything. So this is the kind of kind of understanding of a picture we have of freedom. When would I be free? I can do what I want. Nobody can control me. Nobody can question me. So if you had that kind of a situation, how would you feel free? There is a freedom that is known or, or, or felt by a wise person. He also is not ruled by anybody, not controlled by anybody. What do you mean, Swamiji? The police can come and arrest him. What do you mean he's not ruled by anybody? Even the wise person also has to respect the laws of nature and then he has to climb down the stairs. He cannot jump. In what way do you say he's free? He is free because he is free from all these needs. Either you rule everything or you are free from the need to rule. Thus Vedanta says either you fulfill all your desires or you become free from desire. So one who has fulfilled all the desires feels total contentment Shrotiya stacha akaha tasya. Taitri Upanishad describes these various entities such as Pitrus, such as Gandharvas, Pitrus, Devatas, Indra, Prajapati, who have very special powers to be able to enjoy special things. So what they enjoy, which we, which we would think is enjoyment, the ability to get what we want and enjoy what we want. The same ananda is experienced by Shrotriya Sacha Akamatasya. One who is wise and therefore free from all desires, he enjoys the same degree of happiness as Indra enjoys. But ultimately, the, the happiness is in freedom. Fulfilling a given desire makes me free from that desire for that moment. And I may think that I am happy because my desire is fulfilled. Or Vedanta may say that I am happy because I am free from the burden of that desire. So, a worldly person fulfills all the desires like a king, a ruler, and is happy or free. And wise person is free from those needs. Swami, do you mean that he cannot be arrested by police? He can be. 
at the worldly level even the wise person also is subject to all the rules and regulations because they all apply to the body and body of course he is under the control of the laws of nature and that way we feel controlled all the time but that is because of identification of the body so an ordinary person feels limited controlled bound helpless not because that is the nature of the self but because of taking the body to be myself and therefore whatever happens to the body i equate it to happening to myself because of identification like while i'm watching the movie what happens to the character on the screen happens to me if there is an identification therefore an ignorant person who is bound limited controlled helpless not because that is the nature of self but because of identification with the body that's all then for a wise person that's not so he does not judge himself based on what the condition of the body is so body is control body may be even tortured but he being free from the identification of body doesn't feel therefore the freedom that a king or ruler enjoys by virtue of ruling is the freedom that a wise person enjoys by virtue of being free from the need to rule that's a big freedom right now i have the need to control others to dominate others and then i feel i'm something my need to feel that i'm something requires me to control and rule others dominate others so either you, you become you rule and dominate or you become free from the need so freedom is freedom from all the needs prajahati yada kaman sarvan partha manogatan atmanye vatmana tushta sthita prajna stada uchade when all these needs and demands have left him either you fulfill all needs and demands or they leave you you cannot get rid of them we cannot get rid of need he, the need has to leave us that that then only we can have freedom but so me when would this need and demand leave me when they don't find any entertainment here as long as i'm feeling lacking wanting so long all the needs and demands find there nourishment because i feel a sense of lack and want in the world the needs and demands have their sustenance in my lack and want there's no lack and want the need comes and has finds no you know nothing to to be supported by therefore they won't come as long as this fellow was drinking every evening at 6 o'clock in the evening a certain group of people would come to him then a severe heart attack and doctor said any more drink and you are gone he gave up drinking now what to do in the evenings somebody said hey you st- you, you read uh, ramcharitmanas ramayana we started reading that those old friends came ramjeet mas they were looking for things around and they didn't find them <laughs> they left 
other people came. So, how come they left? Because they did not find any entertainment, any support, any nourishment. So, also they met with desires, etc. come. And they find their nourishment as long as I have a sense of incompleteness, lack or want. When I see myself as a complete being, because I know the true nature of the self, then those demands and expectations on, live on their own. That's the real freedom. To give up something is one thing. But when I give up something, it's not given up completely because the subtle attachment for them still remains. The rasa still remains. That only goes when I discover the rasa for myself. Rasopyasya param drishtva nivartade. Lord Krishna says that when we create a distance with objects of pleasure, he remains free from enjoying those objects, but still, the fascination, attachment for the objects still remain in my mind. I still miss them. Param drishtva nivartade. When I find that I am myself the source of happiness to me, then I become free from even those subtle attachments. That is all Vedanta described as freedom. That's all. Freedom is not a physical phenomenon. It cannot be and should not be described as an event or as a set of circumstances because they will change. There's no sovereign who will remain sovereign forever, no ruler will remain ruler forever. Is it not so? Well, on Aurangzeb, this son comes and he, you know, kills everybody. His son comes and kills him. So this business of ruler and king and all of that is only temporary. The wise person is called ruler, not because he's ruler in prime, because he doesn't want to. Who will want to be bothered with him? That's samsara. Who wants? Why should I rule? Why should I possess? Because everything comes with its price, nothing comes free. Everything comes with its price. Meaning that if I have something, I have to pay the price for it and continue to pay taxes. You know, money also doesn't come with some demand, they come. Power, everything. He doesn't need anything and therefore there is nothing to pay. That is freedom. That's what Vashyakara said. Evam sarvhutatma vidvan brahmavit mukto bhavadi. This manner, brahmavit, the knower of Brahma, sarvabhutatma, what has happened to him? His, his perception has changed. So far the perception was, I am the self of this limited upadhi. We all know that. But the perception has seen, I am self of all. Nothing is separate from me. The I, that capital I of the wise person, all of these things are included. When I use the word I, this is all that gets included. When he uses the word I, everything is included. Sarva Bhutatma, nothing is excluded. In that sense, whatever everybody has belongs to him, in case if you want to describe it that way. Sarva Bhutatma Vidwan, Brahmavit Nora Brahma, Mukto Bhavadi that he is described as a ruler of all, as the king of all, is not to describe him this way in a primary sense, to describe that he is free. So how do we describe freedom? In the terms that we can understand. If the word freedom is used, then we may not know what, it, what exactly is conveyed. He becomes ruler of all, then I know what freedom is. So that freedom he enjoys. Meaning that this knowledge makes a person free. 
freedom from all needs, including freedom from need to rule, and freedom from need to control, freedom from and they are all needs. You never use my weight around, throw my weight around, they say. And control and rule and one, you know, and I, I, that's all I, but then, that is not freedom. Freedom is the freedom from all those needs, that's all. And I said, the needs have to leave me. I cannot become free from needs and then needs leave me. When needs leave me, when I, my need is fulfilled, from where? From my own self. So whatever it is that I wanted from the world, I find within in myself. Atmani Atmana to have one who is satisfied with oneself, by oneself. Then all the karmas, all the desires leave him. <clears throat> now we are on the page thirty two. In the line twelve. So basically the discussion is complete now. But Bhashyakara connects, connects what all is discussed here with what has all transpired so far in Upanishad. We are in the second chapter of Upanishad which is Madhukanda, conclusion of Madhukanda. The Bhashyakara shows how this concludes everything. Something was proposed in the first chapter. So, what all transpired in all those places, how all of these is now concluded. It's all connected and concluded to give us that a complete vision of what the Upanishad has done. Bhashyakara says, Yaduktam Brahma Vidyaya Sarvam Vavishantaha Manusha Manyante Kyutan Brahma Aveda Yasmat Tat Sarvam Abhavata Iti Idam Tad Vyakyatam So, Bhāshikara takes us back to the first chapter of 149. Anyway, that what was stated in 149 is restated of Bhāshikara here. And you can see the translation of that on page 33, line 3. The question, man think, through the knowledge of Brahman, we shall become all. So this is one way of describing the result of knowledge. This Upanishad describes the knowledge, result of knowledge, knowledge of Brahman as becoming all. The earlier passage said, which also we refer to here, he said, Brahma va idamagrasi tadatma me va ved ham Brahma smiti tasmat tasaram ahavat. Brahma va idamagrasi, that this aspirant sitting in front of the teacher is Brahman already, even if he, does, when he doesn't know. When he or she thinks that I am a jiva, then also is Brahman. Only with ignorance, he doesn't know that I am Brahman. The ignorance, he thinks that I am a Jivatma, in reality he is Brahman. But suffering because of his conclusion, perception, I am a Jivatma. 
Tadatmanami Vavet. On account of fructification of a lot of virtuous deeds that he must have done, he came across a compassionate teacher who made him see this fact that, hey, you are not a samsari, you are Brahman. And that's how, when the Acharya, the teacher, taught him, in keeping with the vision of the Upanishad, the scriptures, then he saw, I'm Brahma Smriti. Then he realized this fact that I'm Brahman. What happened to him? When he realized or he saw that I am Brahman, what happened? Tasmat tat sarvam ahvat. By virtue of the knowledge that I am Brahman, he became all. So, result of the Brahma jnanam are described differently in different places. Here in this Upanishad, the result of Brahma Jnanam, knowledge of Brahman itself is Brahman, is described as becoming all. So Vashtikara reminds us or connects, look what was proposed there, is all now explained here. They will just say that he knew he was Brahman and became all, that's all. In what way now does he know Brahman, how does he become all, he is in fact described here. Therefore the discussion that was commenced that time, there, is now concluded here. These the whole thing is one text. And how therefore, the Upakrama, Upasamhara, introduction and conclusion, how they are in alignment. So going back to that Bhashya on line 15, page 32, Brahm Vidya Saram Bhavishyanta Manusya Hamanyate Kivutat Brahm Aved Yasmatat Saram Ahavaditi What is that this person knew? Because the wish he became everything. Ididam tad vyakhyadam evam. That is explained here in this manner. So there is just a statement that was made. That he knew himself as Brahman and by virtue of that knowledge he became everything. Now how has that been described and explained here? So what has been explained here, Vashyakara restates in the sentence, says further, Atmanam eva sarvatmatvena acharya agamabhyam shritva matva tarakataha vijnaya sakshat evam Tatha mudu brahmane darshidam Tatha tasmad brahma vijnana evam lakshanad purvam api brahmai vasate avidyaya abrahma asi sarame vachasate asarvam asi Tamtu avidyam asmad vijnanad tiraskritya brahma vidha brahma ivasan brahma abhavata sarvasan There is a saha there which is san sarvasan sarvam abhavata So Bhashyakara, see what has been done in the last two chapters. Earlier Maitri Brahmana, and this Madhu Brahmana. So what was proposed there, then the Brahmana or the aspirants were thinking among one another, that people say that we will become all,
So what is it that you know by which you become all? Vaish Chaitanya says, that has been elaborated here now and explained. Atmanameva sarvatmatvena acharya agamabhyam shutva, line 14. Acharya agamabhyam shutva. Having listened to the Upanishad from Acharya, from the competent teacher, Agama, who unfolds the Shruti. So what the teacher does is, he unfolds the statements of the Shruti. In that sense, teacher also does not contribute something new. The contribution of teacher is in terms of the method of unfoldment. Every teacher unfolds and well, even methods are also coming down to us, but the new illustrations can be there, new ways of explaining, depending on the audience, depending upon the times and examples, etc. But basic thing does not change. So, the Acharya Agamabhyam Shutva. So, only one thing that the Vedanta teacher says, and that is that you are Brahma. And that's all. Why should you have to keep on saying, because you say that I am not Brahma, that's all. This fellow says, I am a lamb. Why? For whatever reason. So, so I say that I am a Jivatma, I am a limited being. On what basis do you say? I know, I experience, you have experience. For some reason we have Concluded, we have perception of ourselves that I am a limited being. Why? We don't know. Ignorance. And therefore the teacher needs to say that what you take yourself away is not what you are. Tattvamasi, you are Brahman. So this is one statement that the teacher says. Our well, Swami used to say that what I am telling you today is what I will be telling you two and a half years from that. Or we had a two and a half year course. Not a three year course and three and a half year course. We didn't have that luxury. Of two and a half years, we counted how many days Swami was away. Anyway, <laughs> I shouldn't be complaining, but what I am telling you today on the third day is what I'll be telling you after two and a half years. Nothing else to say. Then why do you keep on saying that? Just to make your conviction firm. Swami used to give example of a Polaroid film. Then a Polaroid camera, you take a picture. You pull out the frame, you don't see anything, and you allow two minutes to pass and slowly that picture develops. I don't know if this generation has seen a Polaroid camera or not. We used to have that. And what you see in the beginning, just a faint outline of Swamiji sitting on the chair. And slowly that picture becomes clearer and clearer and you can see the features emerging out. Now you see the eyes and the nose and lips and the beard and whatever. Even when all these details are emerging, your knowledge doesn't change. This is Swamiji sitting on the chair. That remains. When you saw that faint outline, then also the knowledge was Swamiji sitting on the chair. And in two minutes, when all the features are clear, that remains Swamiji sitting on the chair. Except that becomes clearer and clearer and clearer. So you are told right away, you are Brahman, so you know what it is. But it is like the faint outline. Then, 
For years and years you keep on listening. And that picture slowly develops. The outlines become clearer and clearer. Your knowledge or conviction becomes clearer and clearer. That's what Acharya does. There's nothing else to say, really. They may describe creation and all sorts of things they may describe. The purpose of all the description only is you are Brahman. That is the Mahavakya. Others are all Avantavakya. So, Acharya Agamabhyam Shutva. This is what the student listens from the teacher. Matva, the earlier Brahmana said, Atma Vare Dashtavya, Shrutavya, Mantavya, Riddhyasa Vya Maitrai. Shrutavya, the first to hear. Mantavya, the Mananam, you reflect upon what you understood from hearing the teacher. You assimilate that knowledge, make it abiding in you. So, Shrutavya, Mantavya, Dhyasatavya, proceed in Ali Brahmana, Bhashyakara again, repeat that. Shrutva, Matva, Tarakataha, Vijnaya, Sakshat, Evam. So, this is how the, what was said there, just in one statement, is elaborated and explained here. But even the Maitri Brahmana did say, but the Madhu Brahmana elaborately described this Atma as said here, Yatha Madhu Brahmana Darshitam. In Madhu Brahmana, this fact that you are the self of all is very clearly delineated. Tasmat Tatsanavat. You know, say Tasmat by virtue of that knowledge, Tatsaram Avavata. This Vice person became everything. What do you mean becoming everything? So, Vasakara Tasmat. Tasmat Tatsarav. What is Tasmat there? Tasmat means Brahma Vijnanat. So, what Tasmat comes from 1410. Tasmat Tatsaram Abhavat. That Tasmat, by virtue of that. Tasmat, because of that, because of what? Brahma Vijnanat. By the, by, that means, by the knowledge of Brahman. What kind of knowledge? Evam Lakshanat. Of which Lakshana is stated in Madhu Brahmana that you know yourself Brahman is Sarvatma. Then he became, he became Brahma, became everything. What do you mean became everything? So, Purva is Brahma Evasat. He was Brahman even earlier also. Even when he did not know, and even when he thought that I am a Jivatma, he was Brahman. Purva be Brahma Yavasat. One was Brahman even earlier also when he did not know. It is not that when you are ignorant that you are bound. And by knowledge you become liberated. Knowledge doesn't liberate in that sense. Knowledge does not bring about a change. Knowledge reveals the fact. So, Puramapi, Brahma Yavasat, one was Brahman even earlier also, Avidyaya, a Brahmasi. Because of ignorance, thought that I am not Brahman. I am not Brahman. I am a lamb. Why? Because everybody is lamb around. So you keep on repeating, I am not Brahman. On what basis do you say, I am not Brahman? I am not Brahman. How do you know? Have you seen the I? If you see I and Jivatma together, then I can say I am But I have never seen that I. Understand this. That I never becomes the object of my perception. And still I have so many notions about I, which I have never seen. I am the body, the body you have seen. I am the mind, the mind you have seen. The I am, you have not seen, but you are joining them. So that's the amazing feat that we accomplish. 
by joining unjoinable things. I am can never be joined with body, etc., but we still do that. And conclude that I am not Brahman, I am limited. So, Purvamapi Brahma Yavasan Abrahma See, even though it's Brahman, he entertains the notion that I am not Brahma, I am Jivatma, I am a limited being. Avidya because of ignorance. Saramevachasaramasi, even though he was all. Because who am I? I am consciousness. That is the self of all. If I take myself as a body, then I am not everything. I am just this much. In this part, the space within the part, think that I am part space, then it is only enclosed in this part as though. When the part space know that I am space, then all spaces are in. Then it becomes itself of all the part spaces. Because that's what space is. Similarly also Brahman, I am all, the self of all. But when the space identifies a part and entertains notion that I am part space, so also Brahman identifies this part and think that I am a Jivatma. When that notion goes, so Sarvam Evas Chasat Asarvam Asid. Even though he was all, he was as though not all because of ignorance. Meaning that I am not all is a notion, not a reality about me. I am not Brahman is a notion about myself, not a reality. Which notions are the products of ignorance, which habitually makes me identify with what I am not. Tam to vidyam asmad vijnana tiraskritya. Therefore, dispelling their ignorance. This ignorance is a very, uh, very dangerous thing, this ignorance. Usually ignorance is only absence of knowledge, not knowing something. But here, this ignorance is knowing something wrongly and not knowing that this is wrong. It is like driving and you know, in a new place and thinking that I am going on the right path, even though I am going on the wrong path, I think I am on the right path and I will never question. In my life also, I do not question this conclusion that I am a Jiva Atma. So, teacher of us wants to question that conclusion. That's what the Vedanta teacher does. What reason do you have to say that you are a Jiva Atma or you are limited? And so, the ignorance which creates sense of limitation and limited, limitless, the ignorance that creates sense of individuality in the one who is all. The ignorance is of this nature, which creates the vipriya jnanam, the false knowledge. Tamta vidyam asmad vijnana tiraskritya. Says banishing this ignorance of this nature by this knowledge. Brahma vid, Brahma yavavati. The roar of Brahma becomes Brahma. Meaning what? Brahma yavasana. By knowing he doesn't become anything. He is Brahman and takes himself to be a Brahman. He is a lion and takes himself to be a lamb. Not that he becomes lion. But his notion that I am a lamb goes away. Similarly also the notion that I am a jiva, I am limited, goes away. Brahma, that's how he became Brahman. Who was Brahma as though became Brahman. Many stories are told. Like a prince that was kidnapped. And nobody knew, they searched for him and nobody knew where he was. And when the here king died, he did not have any descendant. They were looking, they said, he had a prince. He was kidnapped, where is he? Must be somewhere. And prince can be recognized by the lakshanas, by the characteristics. So then the people were sent around the whole country in searching of the prince. And they were looking, I don't know how many people they must look at and they came to this place and there was a beggar. 
who was begging. And one of these persons looked at him and said, wait a minute, look at his nose, look at his facial features. He's not a beggar, looks like a prince, looks like the son of our king. And he started, you are not a beggar, you are a prince. Even though he was prince, he took himself to be a beggar. So not that by virtue of, he became prince. The one who was prince, but thinking that I am not the prince, as though became prince by this teach, by this knowledge. So also the one who is Brahman, as though becomes Brahman by this or one is all, but think that I am not all, as though becomes then all. Sarva san, sarva ahavat, who was already sarva, all became all. <coughs> Meaning that what was stated in the first chapter is as Vidya Sutra, Atma Ete Upasita, may you know yourself as Atma. All of that is now concluded here very clearly. What was meant by those statements is very clearly delineated here in the third, and this fourth, and fifth Brahmanas. That's how. So if you look upon these first two chapters as Upanishad, that Madhukanda. So Bhashyakara is showing the connection between Upakrama and Upasamhara. What is introduced there? And what is the conclusion here? <coughs> and therefore, Bhashyakara says, Parisamaptaha Shastra Artha Yadartha Prastutaha Parisamabda Shastra Artha Shastra Artha, the import of the scriptures. What was the import? What was the theme? What was the purpose of the whole Shastra? Was it simple? To make me see that I am Brahman, that I am all. Why do you say, I'm, what, what, see, uh, what, what do you get by saying that I am all? Because I am lacking nothing. When I am all, I am lacking nothing. I am all meaning that nothing is separate from me. I am all means I include everything. This Upanishad began by saying that when you look upon a Brahmana as different from you, then you get rejected. Now I realize that, oh, what I am is brought, Brahmana is what I am also. So now when I look at the world, relate to anybody, the idea of the division doesn't come. And by creating division which is not there, the sense of rejection which I was always feeling, Internally you always feel. This distance you feel. Unless you know the absolute oneness, you always feel the distance. Depends upon your relationship, but still. But that distance which is not there, now I see that in, in primary sense what you are is what I am. Because you are not this body-mind sense complex, nor am I this body-mind sense complex. Like this little pot space saying that, hey, I now know that I am the self of all the pot spaces. Otherwise, this fellow has a lot of complex in standing in front of him, this little one. He keeps on looking at itself, look at this, how big it is, what a big stomach he is, what big opening he has. How a disc can store, what can I? Always suffering from inferiority complex. And this fellow having superiority complex. These complexes are going to be there when this is different and that is different. Some complex will be there. Some sense of limitation will be there. And the suffering that arises from that complex will be there. It's only that when this fellow's perception, geez, I am not part of space, I am space. Then he says, hey, this is also space, I am the self of all, 
Sarvatma. So this is Shastrata. This is the way, not by making us something, by enabling us to see what is that I am made free from my sense of limitation. That fortunately, I am free from limitation. Therefore, there is a scope of discovering my freedom from limitation. Otherwise, it would not have been. So, Vedanta teaches only what is, what you are, what I am. So, Parisamapta Shastra So, this is all that Shastra had to say. The import of the scripture, Tasmat Tatsaram Ahavad, by virtue of that knowledge he became all, that is Shastra, that is the import of the Shastra, that is what Shastra wanted to convey. Because saying myself as all, frees me from all sense of separatedness. All sense of division. That was briefly indicated. <clears throat> so, Prastavana was the first chapter in those passages, 1, 4, 10, etc. <clears throat> and also that, that same subject matter came, by the way, in the beginning of this second chapter, that was in the form of a dialogue between this Brahmana Gargya, Dripta Balaki, and Ajata Shatru. There also the proposal was Brahmate Brahmaniti. Gargya said, I will teach you Brahman. When you could not teach Brahman, then say the Raja Shatru, Brahma Gnapaishyamiti, I will make you see Brahman. Meaning that the purport of that dialogue was knowledge of Brahman. So with knowledge of Brahman he started in the 1, 4, 10, first chapter of 4th Brahmana, 10th Kandika, again referred to in the first Brahmana, Jata Shatur Brahmana, this and then Shishu Brahmana and Maitri Brahmana and this Brahmana. So all these Brahmanas have only elaborated upon what was stated there. It's not concluded here. That also has to be stated. Now what next? There is nothing next now. Don't look for anything else. Then what? Then if you think this has not done the job, continue to listen, continue to deliberate, continue to uh, contemplate. Because whatever it is that you need to know has been told you. What next? What next? What more? Because the mind wants variety. There is nothing more. I think next, this is it. That means that you again listen, reflect upon that, assimilate that. Then what is being said now is what Bhashikara continues to say. We'll take a break here and then give you a break for about 20 minutes. Come back by 11.30 and we'll complete the rest of the section.